Therefore we will not be fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The hidden raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Psalms chapter 46 from verses 2 to 7. Hello, my name is Ressa Meagbet and I bring you glad tidings of a life paid for upfront by Christ Jesus. A life of fullness and total recovery. This life is available now and not in some distant future and neither is it a stale, expired experience promised for a time and season that has passed. No. This life is perpetual, unending, and is flowing through our souls like a river. If we let it, it will overtake, overwhelm, and overflow our minds and then our entire existence. This overflowing of our entire existence is the place where deliverance and its attendant joys become a lifestyle. This life is a reality as people who believe in Christ Jesus. It has been given to us freely and free of cost, but we only enter into it if we believe, because this reality is only experienced by those who follow the principle of faith in Christ, absolute faith in Christ, and there is no other way. I welcome you with those words to another episode of Streams of Gladness on SWBN TV. I trust God that you are doing well. Streams of Gladness Indeed, God our Father has made provisions for us, the tabernacles of the Most High. He helps us each moment in Christ, through Christ and by Christ, and that right early, all the time. Are you weary? Are you wondering how this thing shall be? Are you afraid, exasperated, hopeless, seemingly helpless, and perhaps hapless? Are you confused and feeling overwhelmed by challenges or weaknesses? We bring you glad tidings from the throne of our Father, where an angel collects your tears and prayers in a golden vial and brings them before God the Father, as we are told in Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. And where Christ, our advocate, forever lives, making intercessions for you and for us all. Have you trusted Jesus lately? Have you trusted him in a place of reckless, unshaken, withholding nothing faith? Have you abandoned logic and rationalizations and believed only because he said so? God is looking for such men to trust his Christ. Streams of gladness. Scripture is replete with the extent our Lord Jesus Christ went when he walked the earth to honor the faith of men and women who believed in him. No questions asked, withholding nothing. He proved over and over that by his word we are made overcomers. He said to the man by the pool of Bethesda, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man rose, took up his bed, and walked. No ceremonies, no complications, no processes of man. Only his word and his presence settled that 38 years of frustrating cycle and controversy. Faith in God and hope kept the man coming back and the fullness of the Godhead bodily met him and took control. Hallelujah. He said to the centurion, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And when the centurion inquired, the Bible records that his son began mending at the time Jesus spoke those words to the centurion. Jesus went about doing good and still is going about doing good. I picture him stooping beside you right now, asking, what will you have me do for you? Or, do you want to be made well? Will thou be made whole? Now, like the helpless cripple by the pool, tell him your story. Watch him listen and answer. But you must have the willingness and unconventional faith of the cripple to respond and believe that you can walk, simply because Jesus said so. 
irrespective of what the tradition for obtaining healing was in an environment ruled for 38 years by ceremonies, routines, apprehensions, and helplessness. Streams of gladness. We must incline our ear to hear the instructions he will give. But remember that to incline, we must come very close. Note also that when we incline, we lean or turn away from a given direction, vertical or horizontal. So, we will be turning away from the conventional, from the expected or natural inclinations. Again, to recognize his voice, we must have a relationship with him. Are we close enough to hear the uncommon, often unpopular instructions that break the yokes and the cycles and bring the changes? His instructions are different and are not what we already know or expect. Neither are they the way man has known or done it or expect it to be done. Not inclining to hear him will make his voice distant and the instructions he will give unclear. His instructions are the mind of God and only those who have their heads on his chest will hear his heartbeat for every situation. Will you keep your head there all the time? If we know him intimately, we will come to trust his thoughts for us. And if we trust his thoughts for us, we will trust his direction for our lives and peculiar situations as they arise. My name, I'm Sharon Ibiya mm -hmm. Psalm chapter 110. And the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. So Jesus was seated and he was given a rod and it was declared upon him, rule down in the midst of thy enemies. So for me, that scripture means that I've been given authority by reason of the scepter that has been stretched for and I have the authority to rule down in the midst of all my enemies until the fullness of, of the plans of God is, made, is brought to fulfillment on the earth. That is complete dominion and authority brought to God under Christ by me. We take our refreshment this week from another kind of strange strategy in John chapter 5, verses 5 to 9. And we call this one our unconventional faith. Streams of gladness. John chapter 5, from verses 5 to 9, from the New King James Version, it reads Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? A sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately, the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. Streams of gladness. God in Christ has rewritten the traditions of men and the limitations of our personal abilities. These traditions and limitations held us bound, inhibited our minds from the true deliverances that Christ wrought for us on the cross of Calvary. They have crippled our motions in entering into our rest. There are traditions that becloud our minds and exalt themselves above the knowledge of Christ in our lives. God in Christ rewrote these rules and mindsets and gave us a new law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the perfect law of liberty. Believers doubt this? He has written the conventions of men and invites us to cast down the veils over our minds and break them all down to bring us his goodness and wonderful works ordained for us by Christ, in Christ and through Christ. So who is that man that fears, loves, believes, and depends on the Lord alone? 
let him go only as the Lord commands. For in that place are certainties and assurances, promises and fulfillment that defy mundane traditions, routines, ceremonies and processes. Are we close enough to hear the instructions that break the yokes and bring changes? And what is this instruction? Believe in God and believe in Jesus Christ whom he has sent. It is an instruction for the simple heart and the poor in spirit who has wrenched himself or herself of all things and everything that Christ alone might be preeminent, prominent, take headship and indeed be all as he should. Because he lives, we can face every tomorrow and we shall enjoy divine health, wisdom, joy, happiness, protection, prosperity, promotions, uncommon favor, and longevity in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Bible is God's word. It is not a piece of information for the museum or library. The Bible is the living word of God. It has in it the roadmaps for our lives. But soon, the Bible will likely be out of your reach on the internet and on your phones. So we ask you, do you have a hard copy Bible? If you don't, buy one. Ensure your children have one and mind the version you get. This is an end time awareness campaign powered by SWBN TV. As we draw the curtain on today's episode, I encourage you to remember that Christ has broken all gates of brass and has torn every bar of iron in sunder for us who believe. Believe in the unfailing name of Jesus. I am Resame Akbet, and this episode has brought refreshment to my soul. I hope it refreshed you too. Thank you for making time to join me, and God bless you. This is SWBN TV. SWBN TV.